Welcome to the reading nook of my flat, aka my new filming corner. Yee! It's like I've got a professional set. This is amazing. I love it. So I said I would make this video. So here we are. How I bought a flat in London. I've been getting a lot of questions. Just how? How did you do it? Because I am 26 years old. Other than my married friends, I am the only person within like my peer group of people my age who has purchased property. So it's kind of a big deal and a bit of an anomaly. So we are going to get technical in this video. I'm gonna be talking mortgages and help to buy and all of that yummy stuff that I learned all about and had no idea about before going through this process. But now I feel like a wizard, <laughs> got all this knowledge. But the crux of it, of how I managed to buy a flat in London is hard work, savings, money from family, help to buy and getting a mortgage. Those were all of the things that were in place for me to be in this position. And I just want to take this moment to acknowledge the luck that I have and the privilege that I have because I had this money from family. So thank you, parents and grandparents. Much appreciated. You're welcome to come stay anytime. Other disclaimer, I bought this myself. My partner lives here with me, but it is mine. <laughs> if I keep looking down, it's because I have notes and there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna take you through an overview of the process, like the timeline of events and what happened. And then I'm gonna talk about help to buy and how that works for anyone who is confused about that. And then I'm gonna talk about the mortgage side of things, specifically trying to get a mortgage as a freelancer. And then I've got some FAQs um, to answer as well. And hopefully, by talking about all of that, I'll have covered everything. So the process. It started with me having a very good business year and knowing that I had this money from family that I was like, oh, I might look into buying a flat and seeing if the money that I have could stretch that far. We'll see. So I started to figure out what my budget was and what I could maybe afford if I was looking to buy. Turns out I love looking at real estate. Um, even, even before I was seriously considering buying, I would be on Zoopla, I would be on Rightmove and I would just be looking at all of the properties and I would often like set it just to like most expensive just to see. And do you know what? I love me a good floor plan. Whew. I went to a couple viewings of new builds um, to get an idea of what that was like. One of them was completely out of my price range, but I had like good conversations with the mortgage advisor there and like the estate agents there that I then going into the next one had like a better idea of questions to ask and like the things that I needed to have prepared beforehand. This was like 10 to 12 months before we would have hypothetically been moving. And Dan was just like to me, stop. Just, just stop stressing. We don't need to think about this right now. So I promised that I wouldn't look at anything until after Christmas and I was gonna just like take a break. I obviously did not keep my promise because I found myself on more websites um, around September time. And that is when I found this. It was perfect. They were launching the development and having the first initial viewing like in one week or like two weeks time from when I found it. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. I went to my mortgage advisor and I was like, I think I found the one. Um, can you do everything for me? So I am like in the best position possible going in. So no one steals it from me. Before I went to look at it, me and Dan sat down with the brochure, we looked through it, obviously, because I was buying it, it was ultimately my decision, but because he was gonna be living with me, I was like, what do you think? And also his dad is a structural engineer, so knows a lot about buildings. So that was really helpful. I went by myself on the open day thing, and I looked around and I was like, yes, great. I want it, filled out the form, and then it was on the Monday that I transferred the 500 pounds. With help to buy is that to reserve it, doesn't mean that you've bought it or anything, but to reserve it, you just pay 500 
pounds and you fill out a little form. Then it was a few months of applying for the mortgage and doing all that and getting the contracts ready and figuring out all that, da 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 da. And then in December was when we exchanged contracts. So that's when you kind of buy the property or like you promised to buy the property and I paid like 5% of the deposit, I think, um, at that point. So a big chunk of money just like went off, goodbye. And I actually remember sending the money just as I was getting really ill. Um, so I spent four weeks in hospital starting from the 29th of December and leading up to that, I was super ill as well. And I remember like exchanging contracts and from bed, like being really ill and like sending the money on online banking, just like, Ugh. and then after my surgery, was when we got the letter through the post. Like, obviously I got emails as well, but there was like the official letter to, that was like, congratulations, you've exchanged. And Dan brought it to the hospital for me and I was in my hospital bed, just like holding it like, yes. <laughs> so what a time, very dramatic. So then we exchanged in December and then we were due to complete in March. Now completion, is where you hand over the rest of the money, you hand over all of your deposit, and they hand you the keys. So completion was due at the end of March, and it was like mid-March, and we were like, are we moving? What's happening? And the estate agent were just like, we don't know, <laughs> it's been delayed. There was just no answers, and it was very confusing, but they were like, any day now, it will be soon, any day now. And basically they told us every week that it would be any day now, soon, 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 for five months. So we were just in limbo. It was horrible. I hated it, I hated it. It was so stressful. And then I had another surgery during that time as well. This year has not been fun. But then finally, on the 6th of September, we moved in. So we got the notice to complete like a week or two before that, but finally, finally it all happened. Apparently it was just all paperwork at the council and it was, the council was being really slow to get everything signed off because obviously it was a new build. So the building was actually done. The building was finished, but you know, that was what the developers were saying. So maybe, maybe some of it was their fault too. Who knows? Who knows? But doesn't matter now because we're in. So that was the process. And actually one of the questions that I got on Twitter was about what was the like timeline of start to finish. So it was about a year. So from finding this property online to moving in, it was about 12 months. But from like thinking about moving and like playing around with options and figuring out what I could afford to moving in longer than that, like maybe a few months, six months longer than that. Okay, so help to buy. This is the reason why I could afford this place. So there are two different kinds of help to buy. There's the help to buy ISA, which a lot of you may have heard of, which is where you put like up to 200 pounds a month into an ISA savings account. And then you can use that towards a house deposit and the government will like give you a percentage of that added to it. So the government will give you a bunch of cash. Um, that's not what I did. I did the help to buy equity loan. This is when the government basically pay for a percentage of the property. So the government own that percentage of the property. And if I were to ever sell it, the government would either make a profit or a loss also on their percentage. If you are outside of London, the government can buy up to 30% of the property. If you're in London, it's 40%. So I did the full 40%. So I only actually own and have a mortgage for 60% of this property. 40% of it is my help to buy loan. The way that the help to buy loan works is that it is interest free for five years. So I am paying nothing on this loan right now. And then on year six, I start paying interest only. The only way that I can buy them out and like take get more of their share and reduce their share is by buying it in 10% chunks. It's 10% of whatever the current value is. So this is my Brexit fail safe. So fingers crossed, prices just go up, even though that's just 
bad <laughs> for everyone else. Um, but fingers crossed, this property doesn't reduce in value because that wouldn't be great for me. But if it does, because of Brexit potentially, then I can use the opportunity to buy the government bit out. I don't know, we'll see. This is my plan, who knows? Brexit might screw us all over, it might not. So with Help to Buy, in order to be eligible, you have to be a first time buyer in the UK, you have to put a 500 pound reserve fee down, you have to have at least 5% deposit. Oh, and you have to be like living in that property and you can't have another property. It has to be your only property. So I can't now just like buy somewhere else. So Help to Buy makes up 40% of this property. 60% of it is my cash deposit and my mortgage. So now let's talk about mortgages. Is this what you were expecting when you signed up for a sex education channel? I know it is, mm -hmm. So the mortgage was probably by far the most stressful thing ever. Literally, the mortgage advisor came round to my flat and was there for four hours. We were going through everything for four hours in order to fill out all the forms and figure out which mortgage would be best for me. So my situation was a bit unique as being a freelancer, although probably not that unique nowadays, loads of people are freelancers, but it does make it a bit difficult because you don't necessarily have like a fixed salary that you can be like, this is how much I earn a year. And it is guaranteed because I have a contract with my employer who pays me that salary every year. No. If you are freelance or self-employed or have a limited company, it is ideal for you to have like at least two years worth of records, at least. When I was applying for a mortgage, I'd actually recently just switched to being a limited company from being self-employed, which just meant it was a hot mess and no one wanted to loan me money. There were only two banks. I only had two options. Um, of mortgages that would loan me money. One, they would loan me a lot more money, but at a much higher interest rate. And the other one, they would loan me less money at a lower interest rate. I ended up going for the less money one. But what that meant was I had to come up with a huge cash deposit. So the minimum cash deposit you need if you're buying through Help to Buy is 5%. Mine was much more than that. Um, just because that was the only way I would be able to afford this. And that is when, thank you, thank you, parents and grandparents, um, that money came in. And then also my own savings. What I'm paying now is just over half of what I was paying for one room in a flat share rent. So I am paying a lot less per month now. But obviously, I'm now in a lot of debt because <laughs> I have a huge mortgage and a student loan. Oh god. So that is logistically kind of how it all worked. Okay, so I think that is everything, but I had a few general questions um, that I got on Twitter that I thought I would help answer. If you have any more questions, if you've got more stuff that you want to know that I haven't answered in this video, then please do let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. So the first one is, how did you decide on an area? I had a general idea of a very large area and it was because I used to live near here when I first moved to London, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to afford to live there because it was too close to central. And so I basically was just like, kind of this area, but a bit further out. And I love this area. It's not very cool, but it's very convenient. It's got some neighboring cool areas. So, you know, that's that's good enough for me. Why buy instead of renting? So it's kind of up to you in terms of like what you wanna do. I don't think it's super necessary to buy. In fact, it's really stressful and expensive. But for me, I was lucky enough that I had the cash deposit. I probably would have been equally as happy just like carrying on renting and maybe like getting a better place and paying more for that. Um, I don't think there is a perfect time, I just decided to. How does it work owning a flat that is part of a multi-unit building? Great question. I own the leasehold, but the ground, the land that this building is on 
we don't own. That is the freehold and someone else owns the freehold and then we have to pay ground rent. And then there's also when you are living in a block, um, a thing called service charge. So service charge pays for all of the communal areas cleaning and lift maintenance and then we have like a communal garden so then I'm assuming there's a gardener and that also pays for that. But yeah, great question. How much did you know about getting a mortgage beforehand? I didn't know a huge amount but I had like a basic understanding and then as I started talking to a mortgage advisor and just like going through the process I would just read a lot online. Money Saving Expert is a great website and has loads of info about all financial things um, for the UK specifically. And I would just make sure that every conversation I had with the mortgage advisor, I would understand what they were telling me before we like moved on to the next thing. Don't be scared of it. I think if you're like going into this process, yes, there is a lot to learn. It's like a big learning curve, but you know, there, there are people whose job it is to basically like help you like make the choices and and understand what your options are this video is super long if you have any more questions like i said do leave them in the comments and i'll try my best to answer them please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll have some more videos in my new filming corner i'm so excited i built i built this i built this good old ikea don't forget to subscribe because i make new videos every week and i'll see you soon bye